used in, in CAT design, they're used in electrical circuit um, optimizations, they're used in a whole bunch of design areas. Now, we want to use those in a, say, a destructive area, meaning breaking crypto. And we did take one of these tools and modified it to, to be able to break ciphers. Um, the one thing we had to add to, to the tool, though, was an understanding of the XOR function. So I was saying that um, the linear feedback shift register gives us um, modestly sized XOR strings. Set solvers, as they're designed, don't understand XOR. And in fact, XOR isn't really used that much outside of cryptography anyhow. So what we did is take this, this standard tool from, from, say, electrical circuit design and add this one piece of, of um, mathematical insight into it. And what we have is a general purpose breaking small ciphers tool um, that has been released under GPL. So um, there, will be, there will be a link on the last page um, linking to Mati Source, my, um, my co-author co in this case. Um, and this tool can now break ciphers like high-tech. Um, this is the internal representation in the tool of the high-tech cipher. Um, so when I was talking about complexity initially, that you want to that you want to pile up as much complexity as possible. Of course, it wouldn't ever fit on one page describing it. This cipher does, so this gives you um, a good intuition already that this is too weak. And in fact, if you look at any um, cipher um, that you find in, say, a software disassembly, and it only uses XORs and maybe a few mapping tables, you can probably put it down on one page, and then you can also break it using these tools. Um, it takes about six hours on a PC to break this, uh, we, we might move this to an FPGA to make it faster, but really, if you can steal one, one car every six hours, um, <laughs> selling them will be your bottleneck, probably. So this is, this is as low of a security as it, as it gets. Um, just before wrapping up, um, and let me move to the original picture here. This is not really bright enough. Um, just to give you an idea of how the set solver is actually um, breaking the cipher. Um, it is executing a brute force attack, really. So it's trying every possible key, only it does it in a smart way where if it already knows that certain keys are not possible, it won't even ever touch them, but rather try the most likely ones first and then easily hit the right key within the first couple of guesses. Um, if you were to sketch out a brute force search of a 2 to the 48 cipher, that's pushing a trillion different keys. Well, I did draw here what the, what the set solver is doing. And while these boxes are very small here, there's definitely not a trillion of them, right? There's, there's a few thousand on this page. And that's all the keys that the set solver needs to, needs to try. So there's, there's each of these boxes is one, one attempt of, of finding the right key. And uh, down here, it did find the right key. So um, compare this to, to a tree of a trillion notes, and you know how much smarter the set solver is about brute forcing. The beauty of this approach, however, is that it is as generic at brute for, brute, as brute forcing. So there's no mathematical function that you can't solve using this way. It's just a matter of, of waiting for it to find the best possible key. And that, again, depends on your complexity, which, again, depends on your nonlinearity. So which brings it back to why this cipher is so flawed it uses a linear feedback shift register. Um, to wrap up briefly, um, we want you, of course, to get involved in this and to, to break alpha D systems, too. I think we've shown that, that it's pretty easy to, to sniff data, at least in low frequency, uh, in the low frequency domain, that it's um, somewhat straightforward to, to find what, what this, the sniff data means, um, since the protocols are very easy. The hardware in the alpha D is very easy. Um, and then I've given you this tool that you can use to then break a cipher if there even exists a cipher. And with all of that, um, we hope we open up the, the, the hardware hacking, the RFID <coughs> hacking domain a little further. And um, I hope we have some time left for questions now. And yeah. I'd like to engage you in a little discussion on what do you think. We have four minutes left for questions. Okay, cool. We have four minutes, so a couple of questions. So first of all, thank you very much. The tool can be downloaded here, and please send us emails if not all the questions are answered here. Thank you.
Are there any questions? The first one is over there. Uh, Michael? Uh, well, it already does. Mm. It, um, the, um, question the, the question is, can we can we extend um, the set solver to to support shifts and rotates? Well, the way we are doing this is, um, we are, for every shift, <laughs> and I know you can't really see what's in these boxes. For every shift, we introduce a couple new boxes in here. So this is the mapping from um, the input bits to the output bits, and the more shifting is happening in between. Um, the more boxes you'll get, but it's already supported. Of course, a linear feedback shift register is nothing but shifts and XORs. Yeah, and data dependent shift? A data dependent shift um, is a nonlinear function, and of course, it is supported. You can map this into a set solver. It will become very hard to solve it, though. So an A51 cipher, for instance, um, that has data-dependent shifts, is not easy to break with a set solver, right? But it is already supported. There's nothing you need to add. Um, the way I'm looking at set solvers is um, they are an, a metric for how strong a cipher is. So they pretty much measure how nonlinear it is. Um, and data-dependent shifts are very nonlinear. So what you'll get from your set solver is the result, this is very hard to break. Any more questions? In the back? Have you, have you considered to use a binary di uh, di decision diagram to, for your set solver? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch that. Have you considered to use binary uh, decision diagram Did for your set solver? Using what? Binary BDD. Binary? Deci binary decision diagram. Binary decision diagram? Yeah, the, the, the principle is, the, <clears throat> is that they, they compress your, uh, your logical formula. Okay. And if, you, if it's uh, simple enough, you will, uh, I think it, it will improve your... We've been doing something, um, not under this name, but we have, we've been running uh, Gaussian elimination on this to simplify the terms, yes. And um, there will be an extension coming out to, to, this, to this crypto mini set pretty soon, whenever we finish the paper. And that will add many more entrance filters. So if instead of throwing this at the set solver, we'll first pass this through a bunch of layers and simplify it. But it's, it, will, it will take off one or two orders of complexity. Still, it will still have the same distinguisher between breakable because it's linear, non-breakable because it's non-linear. Right? But yeah, we're, we're, working. we're still working on we this. Can, we can talk about it. Thanks for the question, though. There's one question in the back. Can we have a microphone there? What's that? Where is the RFID release? Please put it in, if you, I guess you are at the RFID release, ain't you? Yes? I can't really understand that. Mm -hmm. Let me come over there. RFID release. No. No, we're, we're not at the RFID village, okay. sorry. But we are around. If you have questions, just find us. There's a question down there. Yeah. 